Anyone familiar with the hit series Lucifer knows that it's chock full of memorable moments and scenes. From a crook who gets caught with his pants down, to a detective turned into a human smoothie, keep watching to find out about these moments and more. Despite season 1's darker tone, there is still some solid humor to be found, with many solid exchanges and insults. One of the more entertaining moments is a glorious exchange between Lucifer and Chloe in the show's inaugural episode. Lucifer's extended vacation on Earth is interrupted when a famous friend of his is killed in a drive-by shooting. The subsequent police investigation lands him in the crosshairs of Detective Chloe Decker, with whom he tries to solve the murder. Their partnership is, at first, very one-sided, with Lucifer skirting various legalities to interrogate people, including dangling a rapper out of a window. It's after this near act of homicide that one of the rapper's entourage points out Chloe's former life as an actor. Lucifer is quick to jump on this and praise Chloe's assets in a movie titled Hot Tub High School. The one with the famous so, nude scene coming out of the hot tub. It was like a complete Fast Times ripoff. She was like the new Phoebe Kate. She quickly asserts her authority by slapping cuffs on him for his actions, much to Lucifer's sadistic delight. With the broader comedic set pieces of later seasons, it's fun to look back on simpler exchanges like this one. It's an early taste of the frequently recurring dynamic that would make the devil and cop duo so likable. We are first shown a taste of Lucifer's backstory in Season 1, when amidst an investigation, Chloe sees Lucifer's scars. Now, you can't argue with that, can you? It's a low-key but very effective moment, where Lucifer doesn't sugarcoat the actual truth, stating bluntly that the scars are left over from where he cut off his wings in defiance of his father. Your dad did that to you. No, 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 that's where I cut my wings off. What? Well, I didn't. Maze did. I told her to. Chloe, not yet a believer in Lucifer's demonic status, doesn't truly grasp the truth behind his scars. She looks upon them with what appears to be genuine shock and legitimate sympathy, and she quickly stops when Lucifer asks her not to touch them. The interactions between Lucifer and Amenadiel are always a persistent source of drama throughout the entire series. Their often strained relationship would grow from a heated rivalry rife with deceptions to a healthy and mature familial bond. During the show's first season, we would get a taste of this kinder relationship in the episode Wingman. Lucifer's prized possession, his wings, had been stolen, and he'd made it his mission to get them back. After determining that a piece of divinity let loose on Earth would spell disaster, Amenadiel begrudgingly agrees to help. This leads them to an underground auction where the wings are listed as a high-priced item, amongst other alleged divine relics. During the bid for the first item, the Chains of St. Paul, the brothers would share a brief moment of camaraderie. Paul's wrists were too thick to fit in those chains. I know, that man never could pass on dessert, could he? He should have been the same to a Funny uh... cakes. <laughs> <laughs> they not only point them out as fake, but take time to dunk on St. Paul's inability to pass on dessert, sharing a laugh before resuming their respectively combative tones. This is undercut later by the revelation that Amenadiel played a role in the wing's theft. However, it's a legitimately sweet moment and a precursor to the emotional growth both characters would soon make. Father Frank was a one-shot character who definitely left a major impact on Lucifer and the show's fandom. In the Season 1 episode, A Priest Walks Into a Bar, the streetwise priest comes to Lucifer looking for a favor. He asks Lucifer to help him with Connor, an orphaned youth who Frank saw fit to take under his wing. Lucifer being repellent to anyone who serves his father is initially callous to Frank. This would change when Frank, under Lucifer and Chloe's protection, shares his backstory as a traveling musician. Frank's life changed after a car accident killed not only Connor's parents, but Frank's daughter as well. After this sobering revelation, Lucifer feels intrigued by Frank's claim of being a superior piano player and demands to see him in action. The duo then engages in a competitive but friendly piano duet and genuinely seems content in each other's company. Oh, I think I know what you mean. Something like that? Yeah. Chloe, upon returning, sees the two playing together and smiles as she sees Lucifer actually connecting with someone. This newfound friendship would be cut short by Frank's untimely death, something that Lucifer responds to with furious anger. Despite only making one on-screen appearance, Frank plays a major role in Lucifer finding his humanity and growing as a person. The season one finale of Lucifer definitely ends the show's story arc with a fittingly large bang. Malcolm, a recently resurrected dirty cop, looks to reclaim his money by holding Trixie, Chloe's daughter, hostage. It's a situation made all the dire because of Lucifer's newfound mortality, something Malcolm takes full advantage of. 
Lucifer attempts to draw on Malcolm's desires, but the latter reveals that his true desire is to see Lucifer die. With a bullet in his stomach, all seems lost for the former ruler of hell until in a moment of desperation he turns to someone unexpected, God. Lucifer makes a plea to his father that he'll finally do his bidding if God protects Chloe. Oh, I ask. So you protect Chloe. His father hears the message and restores Lucifer to his full strength. It's a wonderfully directed moment, only enhanced by Tom Ellis's performance. It may be a smaller scale victory, especially when compared to the larger multi-character battles in future finales, but it serves as the perfect bookend for season one and sets up intriguing plot developments for season two. Added to the cast in season two is Lucifer's mother, who, after escaping hell, inhabits the body of the recently deceased Charlotte Richards. Upon arriving on Earth, Charlotte goes about making things complicated for Lucifer and Chloe and their budding relationship. From nearly blowing up Chloe with a car bomb to almost blasting Linda with her celestial energy, Charlotte's arrival is marked by rampant insanity. One moment that shouldn't be forgotten is a devious stunt she pulled on the perpetually gullible Dan Espinoza. While leaning into her life as Charlotte Richards, the goddess of creation begins a fling with the hapless detective, which leads to a very steamy public kiss in front of several restaurant patrons, including Amenadiel, her other son. <sighs> Amenadiel's sorrow is punctuated by a giddy maze, taking pictures of his reaction. This moment, as well as their entire love affair, would of course have repercussions later on for Dan. Trixie may never get much to do on her own, but she still has a wonderful chemistry with others. A sizable amount of Maze's character development has a lot to do with her relationship with Trixie, which is similar to that of what an aunt might have with her niece. Many of the most riveting scenes of the show have Trixie somewhere in the crosshairs of that season's danger. Anytime we get to see Lucifer interact with Trixie, it is a guaranteed source of charm and hilarity. From traumatizing her schoolyard bully with his devil face to buying her a doll, Lucifer has certainly given her an interesting childhood. The swear jar joke, though a remarkably simple one, always elicits sizable laughs. Lucifer discovers that Trixie must put money in a jar for Chloe every time she uses foul language. Swear jar? Oh, yes, Trixie's. You give your child money every time she swears? Oh, bravo, detective. In response to this revelation, Lucifer tries to give her a crisp $20 bill to spend on ample curse words. Later on, Chloe reprimands him for teaching Trixie loophole curse words to skirt around the swear jar stipulation. Well, she called her math homework a cluster duck and her teacher a mother flunker. It's a hilarious moment and another key factor in Lucifer's ever-growing appreciation for humanity. It would take a long time before Maze would finally find a partner that could match her spontaneity and dubious morality. By the end of the final season, that partner would reveal themselves to be Eve, the first woman. However, before Maze was chasing dangerous bounties into the sunset with Eve, there was a road not taken. In season three, she would seek a change of pace to her now very cyclical work-life balance. In order to shake things up, she opts to chase a bounty by the name of Ben Rivers to Canada. Ben quickly proves himself to be just as crafty as Maze, making for a very playful chase between them. Ben eventually explains that his status as a serial killer is false and that he had been framed. Maze agrees to help him and, with the help of her friends in Los Angeles, is able to clear his name. Before he goes off into the night, Ben offers Maze the opportunity to come with him. What if you came with me? We can do this, Maze. You and me, we're the same. No roots, no family. Maze considers it, but ultimately chooses her life in LA over a future with Ben. Their goodbye is definitely a meaningful moment, but an important part of her growth. When Lucifer moved to Netflix for its fourth year, series creators definitely took advantage of their newfound lack of restrictions. After rekindling his relationship with the free-spirited Eve, Lucifer's regained streak of debauchery leaks into his life at work. One notable moment inspired an episode title after Lucifer wears his, quote, orgy pants to work. For many, one glimpse of Lucifer's rear end would be enough, but the episode saw fit to up the ante. While on the case of a recent victim, Chloe and Lucifer's investigation leads them to a nudist colony. In order to enter, they must disrobe, a stipulation that Chloe protests, but Lucifer and Ella quickly embrace with gusto. Lucifer! A oh, wedding round, detective. Season four is where the show really starts leaning heavily into its comedic elements, and this is a prime example of that shift. 
It's an underrated yet hysterical little moment that showcases the show's vibrant and often madcap new creative direction. If Lucifer fans were only allowed to make a GIF out of just one moment from the show, we'd like to make a case for this one. When the show's fifth season dropped, the cast was joined by State Farm spokesman Dennis Haysbert as Lucifer's dad, God himself. God, being all-knowing, already felt familiar with the show's core characters, including poor Dan. Dan, upon realizing just who he's talking to, starts behaving strangely to humorous effect. Hey, Mr. Uh, God, <laughs> listen, um, I'm sorry that I slept with your wife. I didn't know she was married at the time, I swear to- God at first seems very laid back about the situation, but then quickly showcases his true feelings on the matter by exploding Dan into a human smoothie that paints the walls, much to Lucifer's shock. God very quickly reverses the event and puts Dan back together, but leaves the poor detective frazzled and traumatized. A rare show of anger from God during his tenure as a supporting character, but a morbid and hilarious one. It's fair to say that Lucifer leaned heavily into its comedic elements after the show switched from Fox to Netflix. Gone was the darker, noir aesthetic of the early seasons, and in its place were comedy and bright colors. The show's final season definitely doubles down on comedic moments, with one serving as its ultimate crescendo. With things amiss in heaven, Lucifer plans to see what the problem is, but unfortunately, he can't get his wings to work. Lucifer also discovers that Linda has been compiling all her data on him in order to pen a tell-all book. The group decides to cull through this data in order to pinpoint what's going on with Lucifer's wings, and hilarity naturally ensues. The most gut-busting moment is Linda's very direct interpretation of the gang's day-to-day -day interactions. It's a sequence that feels like someone made a bot watch every episode of the series, then write a script. Crazy that the killer was the first person we met. What are the chances? I know. It's a scene run totally on autopilot, with every character's identifiable or quirky trait maxed out to 11, complete with a comically stock back and forth Lucifer and Chloe and Maze cartoonishly pulling a severed human head out of a bag. It's a truly wonderful moment and a hilarious summation of why fans love these characters so much. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about Lucifer are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.